In the opening chapter, I explained the checkered past and current events facing and debasing Universal Studios to disqualify their capacity to relaunch the whole of their own Universal Monsters. My follow-up video exemplified this pursuit as a futile endeavor for anyone to chase because everyone had failed to live up to or surpass Avengers exploits. I left off with that burning question, that if Marvel's rival studios couldn't compete with their own superheroes, how could Universal challenge them without any? Now that we're all caught up, it's on with the show. We now come to the man of the hour. The man tapped to shepherd the tailspin of remaking the gothic classics. It is appropriate that Alex Kurtzman, director of the 2017 Mummy, should hold an interview to explain the dark universe on that pop culture wasteland that is IGN. Without further ado, this interview is about as true to form as I would expect a dubiously worded misleading fluff piece would be. I tend to feel like the best way to build a universe is to deliver individual satisfying films and if the audiences like those films the universe will begin to build itself bitch please you built the dark universe and the fans were all too eager to foreclose that property for you this clown shoes director and others like him were the ones that put the cart before the horse and when no one hopped on that carriage for a ride that horse done got shipped to the glue factory While the idea of a shared universe brings to mind comic book movies, Kurtzman was keen to point out that the monsters got there first. Obviously Marvel did an amazing job starting with Iron Man, but people forget that the monsters were the first shared universe, starting with Frankenstein meets Wolfman. They said, well, what are we going to do? What if we put them together? And suddenly a new story was born, and it was actually really exciting to see, and that birthed a million monster crossovers. So the monsters were the first shared universe. No cupcake. People would like to forget. Those films weren't any kind of success story, but were in fact a new low for those respective films. To attempt his spin of reframing these movies as landmark horror is the height of insincerity that just serves to justify his greed-fueled exploitation of a beloved franchise. Full stop. He continues that... And the reason that that worked was because they had already done three Frankenstein films, and they had already done Wolfman films, and the audience loved both characters, and they kind of ran out of gas with those stories. Again, this is that tried and true manipulation tactic of revisionist history. The attempt to recontextualize a bad investment as a big win is false advertisement, meant to generate artificial hype amongst fans for this studio scheme. Furthermore, No one in their right mind purchased a ticket to 2012's Avengers and thought to themselves, Mank, this is just like Frankenstein meets Wolfman, Mank. Don't you mean King Kong vs. Gogia? You know, I think you're right, Mank. No one talks like that. Those movies were borderline parodies and no thing that nobody ever looked at as classic films, especially horror fans. Need evidence? Let's take a gander at this article. Avengers is so much more than a sequel. It's something that, to my knowledge, has never been attempted before. It's a culmination of four separate film franchises coming together under one roof and then, presumably, blowing it right the hell off. The only examples I can think of that brought franchises together in such a way is Freddy vs. Jason and Alien vs. Predator and, well, those pretty much pale in comparison. Um... What's the source of that article? Ouch. Bet you thought no one would notice. Need further proof? When approached with a script for the crossover Alien vs. Predator, James Cameron famously balked, You do that, you're gonna kill the validity of the franchise, in my mind. Because to me, that was Frankenstein meets Werewolf. It was Universal just taking their assets and starting to play them off against each other. Ouch. Bet you thought no one would remember? But no, Alex Kurtzman, seriously. Frankenstein meets Wolfman and King Kong vs. Godzilla were cinematic touchstones worthy of the same walk of fame that's littered with heroin needles and homeless piss. 
And speaking of hypodermic poison and vagrant urine, what say we take a look at Alex Kurtzman's career, shall we? No, no, please, anything but... 2005's The Island. The Legend of Zorro. Mission Impossible 3. Transformers. Watchmen. Star Trek Into Darkness. Cowboys and Aliens. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Ender's Game. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Star Trek Diversity. Star Trek Picard. Hey, how's that Clarice show going? And the walking brain fart that is Clark Wolf in her crappy podcast that I'm sorry that I ever listened to actually exalted her praise over Kurtzman's election as the overlord of the Dark Universe, stating, You couldn't have picked a better man to lead this project. Don't you worry your pretty little head if you don't recognize Clark Wolf. No one does. With all this talk of the monsters getting to a shared universe first, is there even a single exhibit of evidence that the 1963 release of the first Avengers comic references Stan Lee as citing Frankenstein meets Wolfman as an inspiration, despite coming out 20 years prior? Speaking of Marvel, I can see it now. Universal Studios seeing dollar signs and the caper that Avengers pulled off. They don't have any superheroes of their own. All comic book adaptations have failed. What do we do? Who do we turn to? Suddenly, a salt and pepper haired soy boy wearing hipster glasses approaches and says, If you're looking for a hero, I'll answer the call. I'm Alex Kurtzman, and I'll be your disappointment for the evening. I'll make the valiant sacrifice to play the Kevin Feige for your franchise and guide it like he did with every Marvel movie. Except the cruel hands of fate make for a rude awakening as they jostle you from your wet dream. You can't be Kevin Feige just because you say you are or want to be. And please believe, want to be is the lifetime achievement for people like Alex Kurtzman. I'll spare you reading off of Kevin Feige's resume and the billions he's made because I've already read you Alex Kurtzman's resume so you've seen the millions he's lost. It's, it's hard, you know. I mean, we don't want to make these movies until they're worth making, until yeah. they're right. No, that's Marvel's domain. Maybe it'll feel more appropriate down the line as the universe builds itself, but I, I don't think any of us wanted to be accused of ripping off no. what they did so well. Too late. Warn your friends. Warn everyone. 